Welcome everyone. So in this video, I want to go through hosting a PHP site. And in this case, we'll use Moodle. But really, this video is pretty general. Anyone could use it for any PHP app, I guess. So you remember how we initially to set up Moodle, we went through this. You know, we just installed basic programs onto our Linux environment, like the server, Apache, and PHP, and MySQL. And we hooked it all up to each other, and we got a local Moodle site running. So this is great for a local development site if you want to get it going on localhost and we basically install everything directly on our server like that. But how do we kind of run this in the cloud? How do we host a site like this to the public internet? So the way I'll show you how to do it is using AWS, but that's just because I'm used to it, but it would obviously work with the other ones as well. I'm just going to show you a very specific example of how to do it. This is the easiest way I've seen to do it in AWS. So obviously first step is for you to get to where I am here, where you've got your AWS account. This is my account. You log in to the AWS console. I've got some services favorited here, but you can access them all in this menu. Now there's heaps of different services in AWS. For example, EC2, that's your bread and butter. That's your basic building block of like little instances, little computers that are going to run software for you. The easiest way to get a Moodle site up and running, though, is to use a glue service, which is going to spin up EC2 and other services for you. And that's the one I like called LightSail. So open LightSail. So you can search for it, and you find it, and you click that. Now you're going to go to the LightSail dashboard, which is kind of separate and simplified. That's why it's good for this video. So all it's going to do is use those resources that we saw over here in the in the normal console, but it's just going to kind of do it all for you in a more simplified way. So let's create an instance. And then here, what's awesome is that we have these blueprints. We basically have these images that have everything installed already without us having to do much. So whereas before we had to install PHP and stuff, as you can see here, there's, there's this one particular image which is standing out to me, which is this one. We don't have to install PHP and MySQL and Apache now. This image is going to do it out of the box. So let's choose that. Now, the SSH key will be important. You can just leave that as the default. Um, yeah, and just choose, you know, whatever you, you know you might want. Yeah, I'm just going to choose the cheapest one. Let's call it something. And that's it. So we just start that instance up. Just wait for that to start up. So as you can see, we didn't have to choose many options. Obviously, if you went into the EC2 service itself, you could customize all this stuff in much more fine grain detail. But for our purposes, it's fine. Our instance is running. Now we can click the dots and go to manage and we can kind of see the details. So we've got our instance up and running and it's given us an IP address. And what happens if we go to that now in the browser? It works. So we can see we already have this web server set up, this special Bitnami kind of web server, and that's already working. Let's get into the server and be able to check out what's going on. So yeah, one way you can do that is connect using SSH in the browser. So that will put you in here and you can ls, you can see the files. You can see a htdocs folder there, a cd, and you can see an index.html, and that what we're looking at here. But using this terminal client in the browser is a bit ugly and painful. So let's just get it going in our local terminal instead. So I'm going to exit that. You can use your own SSH client. So that's that's just nicer. So to use your own SSH client, what you have to do is download this default key and then go into your machine. And here we are in a local terminal. And if you just go into your .ssh folder, that is where you want to put your default key. Also make sure that you change the permissions for that key. So it needs to be only read only. That would be a command like sudo change mod 400. That's what you need. And then point to that key. Then you've got the right permissions still in there because that's what I already had. And then we can SSH. So if we go back, okay, this is our IP address that we need. So copy that. And the command is SSH-I um, the path to your to your key and well then it's the the username bitnami at ip address and then we're in here and you can see it's just a bit nicer and cleaner on my local than doing it in the web browser 
let's go back and look, right? We've got this page, that's cool. That's the one in htdocs, because if I remove that file, we get nothing there. And if I make a new file, index.html and put anything we want in there, so, so that's in there, and then if we refresh, so you can see it's, it's rendering HTML properly and everything there. We also have PHP already installed. So we didn't have to go through any of those steps of installing PHP here. And that is a good version that will work fine for us. It's also configured with the web server. And we can test that if we say make a test.php file. Let's see if it can actually render PHP in the browser. So you see, if we didn't have PHP installed, it wouldn't output like that. It would literally just show the actual content, the content of the file with the tags and everything. But yeah, it's not doing that. So that's great. And that's working. All we really need to do is put our app into this htdocs folder now. Let's also show that it has a database. So that's also part of the setup. MySQL is existing here. It's a MariaDB version. In the docs on the Bitnami instance that we're in, it will tell you how to find your MySQL password and username. So if we go back in here, let's look at the getting started guide. Get the default application password. That's what we need. So that's going to be back in home. So I've got a password here. Now that we have that password, we should be able to connect to MySQL because you just go... That's kind of the command to connect to MySQL. The username is root. And that's the password. And now I can do show databases. It's just MySQL syntax. Use database test. No, it's just use test. And then show, there's just no tables in there, but that's okay. All right, so let's put in our Moodle site into here and connect it to a new database. Now I also prepared some commands that will help us do this. So these are the ones we need to pull Moodle down and they're just copied from the actual um, Moodle install instructions as well so that's cool. Let's get Moodle cloning into this folder with sudo. We also have git installed already on the instance so we didn't have to do that. If we look at the Moodle install instructions, this one a lot of this does obviously go for many different PHP apps, but yeah, it says, you know, install Ubuntu, install Vim, install Apache, and MySQL, and PHP. Well, all this stuff has already been pre-built in our image, so we didn't have to really do any of that. We also have to install all these PHP modules, but again, this image will have most of those modules. I don't think we have to actually do any manual installations. So I'm doing these steps now with downloading Moodle. Just wait for that to finish. All right, so our update is finishing up there. So that's great. We've got Moodle installed. We can CD in there. Yeah, we've just cloned down the code base. Now you can see we would be on the, we cloned it as sudo. So now we're gonna need sudo in the rest of these commands, but that's okay. Yeah, we're on master, but we want this one over here. We want to, let's get, you know, the latest stable version, not master. We're going to check out that branch instead, 3.11, and we do get branch now, there we are. We also need to create, yeah, a Moodle site data folder somewhere, so we can do that. Okay, let's clear history now. So we made that new folder, let's make it writable by everyone, so that Moodle can write to it. Um, this command will help us see what modules we have installed, so you can see basically our Apache is up and running with all these different modules. and I there would be some of these that would appear in here, the uh, modules that Moodle needs, basically. We can have a look at the Bitnami Apache 2 configuration. You can see how the document root is a htdocs folder that we were looking at before. And we could change this to another folder and make a virtual host, but I'm just going to not mess with the config, and I'm just going to put my app into that htdocs folder so we don't have to mess with it. So let's, yeah, let's go back into that place that we want to put the this is where we want to put our Moodle site let's remove these test files for now so that's empty so we've got our opt folder and we've cloned Moodle into there uh, now let's move that into our htdocs area so to do that we need to do move Moodle 
everything inside the folder to now what is it actually actually wait a second I'm just going to PWD print working directory so now I can see that so let's go back to opt go move Moodle and that's the one into home bitnami ht docs uh, yeah that should work permission denied now there's still a Moodle folder left over because it didn't move any of these hidden files that start with a dot so we also need to do move Moodle slash dot all. That looks good. So there's no dot files left in there. So let's go back over into HT Docs. And you can see now that document root of our server is full of our Moodle code. That's what we want to see. Now if we go back into our browser and let's refresh our site, it starts running the Moodle code. It wants us to do a complete installation setup because we don't have our config file defined yet. So let's do that. That's the next step. Let's make our new config file by copying the default config description kind of file. And then we need to define stuff about our environment so Moodle knows about it. So first thing is that we're using MariaDB, so we can put that here. Now our DB host is on localhost. This is the database name, so let's call that Moodle. We're going to have to set this up. User can be root, password, we need to find that password we had. Now there's also the dub 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 root. Moodle is going to redirect to this, so this needs to be right. And for now we can just put in our IP address, which is this. So that's okay. And then there's also this Moodle data folder, which we created, which as it var Moodle data. All of that is looking good in terms of Moodle. We need to set up the database, we need the database password. So let's write and quit that. We have our command to access the database. Again, we can show databases. So there's no Moodle there yet, so let's create database Moodle. Show databases, Moodle is there. Of course, Moodle is going to be empty right now. Of course, we just created it, it's empty. So let's exit that, but importantly as well, we got the password, so let's copy that and put that into our config as well. So the rest of that looks pretty good. So let's write and quit that. So now our config is in there. Let's go and refresh the page. So you can see it kind of, the URL just changed there and it redirected away from that initial install, which would kind of set up a config file. We're on the next step already, which is to install the database. You can also see that all these PHP extensions, like all these ones here, Moodle needs them, but in our image, they're already set up. So that's why everything's looking good. So we can continue here and let Moodle install the database. It always takes a little bit of time. You can see it kind of went through and made all these tables, but that's all finished now. So we can continue. And now it's the kind of last step. Now we're creating a Moodle user in the app itself. So uh, yeah, we can make a password. Okay, let's try that. All right, we put in a password. I think we're gonna to have to set up some little more details about our site, like the name. Yeah, my site dev. I don't think that's gonna work. Cool, we can skip the registration for now. So we're in our Moodle site, and this is running in a EC2 LightSail instance on AWS.